Hello and welcome inside the WOSN studios alongside Mark Miller. I'm Matt Finkel and it's time for another week of high school football talk on Mark's Madness. And of course we're going to get to high school football, but we've got big news to report. <laughs> and it comes from Mark's son Kyle, who you might remember, and Elida grad, of course, made the San Diego Chargers 53-man roster. Congrats to Kyle. Yeah. What was the moment like when you found out? Well, relief. I think um, as parents, uh, for him, a lot of excitement. Uh, still some questions. He wasn't real sure if, you know, th they call the ones that get cut. They don't call the ones that don't get cut. And he's used to getting the call. Yeah. You know, this is the first time he didn't get the call. And so he wasn't real sure, but he eventually talked himself into it and got pretty excited and getting ready for the Lions now. Getting ready for the Lions week one in San Diego, and then they come right here to Ohio mm -hmm. to play the Bengals week two. So yeah. that should be a nice homecoming. Yeah, we have a few family members down there. That'll be a good opportunity for them to see Kyle again. I bet. And a handful of guys also getting signed to practice squads. So great to see local guys competing in the NFL. And a special congrats yeah. to Kyle. Thank you. Now let's move on to high school football. Yeah. And we've got a lot to talk about there as well. And it was deja vu all over again week <laughs> two. The lightning strikes. And all of a sudden we've got lightning delays. Yeah. And how does this affect the team? And, and this yeah. week was different than last year. In that last mm -hmm. year a lot of the games were postponed right. until the following day. Yeah. This year, it was about 45-minute delays on average. Uh -huh. How does that affect yeah. you? Well, in different ways, you know, but football is a process, you know, and, and you, you map it out day by day, and what you want to do is you want to peak physically, mentally, emotionally for Friday night at kickoff. Well, when that's changed, you got some adjusting to do. It's good to be flexible, and, and it's good to have a coach that's flexible. If you've got a very rigid coach that only does it one way, it's going to have a little, little tough time, and the kids will read that and, and maybe adapt that way. But, you know, the mental part, you're not going to forget the plays in a 45-minute delay. But you are going to have to loosen up again. So physically, you got to do that again. Emotionally is the toughest part. you got to get your head back in there. you got to get excited for that second kickoff time, whatever time that is. Uh, so, yeah, you got to reload. You know, it, it, uh, it's a challenge. Some do it well. Some don't do it well. Uh, sometimes you're a little lethargic for the first couple of minutes and then you get rolling. But you also see that with regular kickoff time games. You know, some guys just aren't ready to play at the beginning of the game. Well, unfortunately, it feels like it's becoming an annual yeah. event here, these lightning strikes. Yeah. But hopefully the rest of the season will, will yeah. be lightning free. And, and like you said, it, it, it is an adjustment, mm -hmm. but good players and good coaches, you work yeah. through it and it's just another obstacle you overcome. Much easier if you haven't played some. If they delay it before yeah. kickoff, which almost all did, or even if you move the game to the next day, you don't have that soreness to get out of there. Right. You know, to play a quarter and a half and then come back and play the next day, that's, that's like playing two games in two days in a row. So it's an adjustment. Football, it's, it's habits and routines. That's what you develop. And, and when you break out of that, it's hard to get it back real quick. Without a doubt. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the Western Buckeye League because the WBL mm -hmm. opened up league play week two. And the game of the week, in my opinion, St. Mary's Van Wert. No Burt. doubt. Yeah. And this was a game we were looking at going in as a potential really good matchup, and it yeah. delivered. Oh, boy, it was. It just how you got to the end is, is the surprising part. You expected nip and tuck the whole way and, and an even battle. And statistically, it was pretty even. But 20 to nothing at halftime, Van Wert I, would, I yeah. would have guessed St. Mary's if you told me it was going to be 20 to nothing, but it's Van Wert. And so I'm, I'm starting to be a Cougar believer now, sitting up in Bluffton, getting those scores, and then to see what ended up happening. And because of a missed PAT, you know what? You miss the PAT to pr give your team a chance to lose. Not that you lost it for your team, but you, you, we hardly ever talk about the guy that made the PAT, Gabe Van, Vandiver, Vandiver, maybe. Um, good for him. He made the PAT that ended up winning it. Yeah, and great resilience by Doug Fry's team well, to come back from 20 points down, you're, score 21 unanswered. Right. Yeah, all of us that know Doug know one thing, he got their attention at halftime. Yeah. <laughs> in no uncertain terms, that 20 to nothing turned around in a hurry. So uh, him, that might be the pregame speech next week. And the way that he transformed that St. Mary's team yeah. last year, it really has taken hold this year. You don't yeah. think that the Rough Riders would have been able to do something like this a couple years ago. Exactly. They'd have thrown in the towel, it'd have been 50 to nothing, you right. know, at the end. But, you know, let there be no doubt, Doug Fry's a football coach. Other Western Buckeye League results, we had Salina edging Ulida 35-34 in an exciting contest. Oh, uh, similar, in, uh, other than the score was close the whole way. Yeah. A missed PAT opened the door. The kicking game and again, and, yeah. a made PAT, get it right, Cole Merlin, he made that one. Uh, but Caleb Hoying to Ryan Harder right at the end. And, and you know, a TD pass with 30 seconds ago. That, that was a great game all the way through. And just a, a tight victory for Salina. Elida kind of let one get away. Anytime you lose at the end, you think like you let one get away. I'm not sure they did, but 
you know, great game. Great game. Both those teams are now one and one overall. Mm -hmm. Kenton beats Defiance, so mm -hmm. Kenton's now one and one. Defiance is also one and one. OG's two and zero oh after a win against Bath. That was yep. another game we were looking at, maybe trying to figure out mm -hmm. who who we have here. And Bath looked really good week one. Yep. OG, we know, expect to be towards the top yep. of the league, and they handled yep. Bath. Yeah, but but you know, you look at the stats. Bath outplayed them. Bath had five turnovers and lost 28-16. Wow. If they don't turn it over five times, they might win that game. Yeah. So I think Bath is a little bit better than what we may have thought going in, what I thought going into the season. What's the final takeaway from the WBO? In my opinion, mm -hmm. and tell me if you agree with this, I think we have a pretty top-heavy league in that there, there's eight teams, eight out of the ten teams mm -hmm. that are all like really good, and mm -hmm. we're not sure where we're going to end up. Mm -hmm. I know we know Wapak beat Shawnee yeah. really easily mm -hmm. on Saturday, and Wapak, uh, again, still the favorite in my opinion. Yeah. But I do think we, we've got a league where the top and the first team and the eighth team or the ninth team are very close. Yeah, I, I agree. Wapak is the only team, I think, that has a chance to go away with it, you know. Uh, not sure they will. And I, like you, think there's a lot of evenly matched teams. We're going to have a lot of close games. Um, it, it might come down to the last second victories to get you into the league championship. Wapak plays Kenton this week. Yeah, we're going to find out a little we'll, bit that way. We'll find yeah. out. We'll get to our broadcast schedule, yeah. too, later in the show. But that is a game you'll be able to see on WOSN yeah. this week. Now let's move to the MAC. Yep. Five teams, 2-0. and oh, Not surprising. No surprise. Marion Local passed Beesville, Bealesville. That's, mm -hmm. That was expected. St. Henry beats mm -hmm. Eaton. So they're mm -hmm. looking strong heading into mm -hmm. league play. Minster over Lehman. And let's talk about Fort Recovery versus Fort Lormie, a rematch yeah. of last year's Week 11 game. And Fort Recovery looked very good. Yeah, they, they must be pretty good. Now, Fort Lormie, they, they played two really good teams, yeah. Fort Recovery and Minster, and got smacked pretty good both times. So they got some rebuilding to do. But Fort Recovery scoring some points. They look like they're going to follow up that last year playoff run with an, another potential playoff run. Uh, they're good. I thought Coldwater, uh, yeah. in dominating fashion, beat a good Jefferson team. I mean, that wasn't that Jefferson went down there and didn't play very well. The, Coldwater's just really, really good because I think Jefferson's going to have a great year too. And, and what Marion Local, I don't know what Bealsville is or where they're from, but I know if you got minus 31 yards rushing, you got dominated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? So yeah. uh, Marion Local's right there too. That Coldwater game was the biggest challenge, I think, for the MAC this week. And we know the NWC has looked really good uh -huh. early on this year, and the Cavs rolled. They, they really were not challenged. No, they weren't. And, you know, Chip Otten has a way of, of winning a game soundly. When you play him and you've lost, you know you really got beat. But you look at the score and it's 35-6. It's not 59-6 to six or something, but that's not Chip. He doesn't seem to do that, you know. Yeah. Whether he tries not to do it or it just doesn't happen because of their offense, I don't know. But, um, yeah, that's a solid win for them. Now they got Minster next. Right. So we're going to find out a little bit about the MAC too. Yeah, th talk about these big Week 2 games. Well, it only gets mm -hmm. tougher Week 3, and that's when – the MAC opens up league yeah. play. Now they start beating each other. Those opening up two and go away. We yeah. play with a couple defending state champs against. Yeah, each other. and then Minster plays Marion Local the next week. Yeah, so we're going to really find out about Minster in the next two weeks. Good. That's what we like to see. We'll yeah. go pit yeah. the best, best against beat them all. the best, and yeah. then we'll we'll see where we stand. That's right. Speaking of the best, Lima Seniors looked really good <laughs> early on. They're two and zero. A big win over Marion Harding. It was their home opener. And the Spartans' offense. That's what we have to keep coming back to talk about, right? Fifty-one a game. Great players are playing great. Gordon's throwing it very well, high efficiency. They found, you know, that Coach Fell knew they had a running back. None of us knew. He kept telling us. We yeah. didn't believe him. And sure enough, Jaden Walker's a really good running back. And then you got the great ones. I mean, you got the two twin towers out there catching everything that's thrown up in the sky. So they are good and fun to watch. You want to <laughs> see an example of yeah, that? And then they start doing yeah. this stuff, which really right. makes them fun Let's to watch. Let's break down a play. We've got a, a trick play that the Spartans decided to run. And this is the first play of the game. Mark, take it away. Well, let's just take a look at it. It's going to be a double reverse pass. Quarterback hands it off to the slot back. He pitches it to the wide out. He throws it back to the quarterback, and he finds the great one down the field, 10 yards beyond everybody. And you think, man, they're so good. Why do they have to do that kind of stuff? Because it's fun. Kids like to practice that stuff. Let's take a look at it. Gordon hands it to Lyles, a little pitch back there. Everybody starts flowing that way. Uh-oh. Here comes Stafford. He's going to run it. We'll start going this way. Good blocking right there. Allows Gordon to get the ball, get his hands around it, set his feet and throw the ball deep. And a good job by Flowers kind of acting like he was blocking the whole time because he'd have been 140 yards down the field if he had just took off running. Right. you got to time it up. Credit the kids with handling the ball and not you know, dropping it or fumbling it or something and, and diffusing the whole play. That's fun. 
That's the kind of thing you do in practice to get kids excited. And when a coach will call it in a game, the players will want to. I'll, I'll bet you yesterday we were saying, Coach, what's our trick play for this week? Right. You know, And they're, they're going to make those babies work. And now the defense is down the road think, oh, my golly, now we got to play that? That play comes after an hour 15-minute lightning <laughs> delay, and you know it's the home opener, yeah. and they want to get out there, and they run that trick play, and it works to perfection. Yeah, that's, 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 that's some it's start. Beautiful. Yeah, it's some beautiful. Start. Yeah, some start. All right, let's finish up with the NWC. Five okay. unbeaten still here, and they have one more lead one more week of non-league play before they get into the, the league schedule. Ada over Arlington, 28-14. Two good 1-0 teams that met yeah. up. and again Good win for Ada. Yeah. Good win for Ada. Seth Conley yeah. looks good. Ada has LCC this week, and that should be a yeah. challenge. We'll find well. out a little something. Bluffton at Van Buren. You were there. What did you was. say? Bluffton looks good. Bluffton looks good. You know, they played through the rain, and halftime was very close, and then uh, Bluffton kind of dominated the second half. Uh, you know, they're, they're good. They're pretty good. Because uh, I think Van Buren's good. They're 0-2, right. and they really need a victory. It's not going to come easy. they got McComb. McComb's yeah. really, really good. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that, a good league again. If Jeffers is not playing defending state champions, you might have six 2-0 teams in that league right now. That's a good league, right. no doubt about it. Surprise of the league might be Allen East, and we knew yeah. going into the season that Allen East was going to be improved, mm -hmm. but a big win against Perry, sure. and they're 2-0. Uh, yeah, and I think you got to list them as a spoiler at least, you know. Uh, Grove and Ada, very, very good. I'm still putting Spencerville and Jefferson at the top. I think they're going to battle it out for that league championship, but those other three teams and maybe more, maybe Bluffton, going to have something to say about it. Crestview lost this week. Spencerville beat Parkway. Mm -hmm. Crestview plays Wayne Trace coming up. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a real rivalry game over there. You right. know, so. so It'll be interesting to see how that all shakes out. Mm -hmm. LCC in St. John's was postponed to Saturday, the Holy War, a big <laughs> rivalry between these two schools, yeah. and a big bounce-back win for the T-Birds. Sure was. Uh, Ethan O'Connor was just lights out. I mean, just 326 of 363 total yards for his team. That's what he had. He ran it for 100. He threw it for 200. Three touchdowns both ways. Just phenomenal. He started off the Elida game like that, and then it kind of went south a little bit when, when they couldn't throw the ball very well. But uh, it, it'll be interesting to see which is the real LCC team. Week one or week two, because right. they were just polar opposites. Yeah, and remember that Elida is a, a bigger school than mm -hmm. them. LCC is mm -hmm. Division Six, yep. so the Ada is now. I think they're in Division Seven Ada. Yep. So they're yeah, starting. So. They're starting to play some mm -hmm. schools a little more comparable in size. Yep. Maybe that's an advantage for them. Yeah, we'll see. But we'll see how it plays out. Mm -hmm. All right, so two weeks in the books. Who are you most surprised is Owen to? Van Buren. Yeah. I know they've played two pretty good teams. They've played Bluffton and Allen East, but neither game was close. Yeah. And I thought they would be 9-3 and three last year, 0-2 oh this year. I, I think they've got to really be disappointed, and, and they'll do everything they can to gain some of that back against McComb, but it won't be easy. BBC, I think it's a little bit down to where it was last year. Mm -hmm. Again, Liberty Benton lost this mm -hmm. week to Bowling Green, who's a great op opponent. Liberty mm -hmm. Benton, that's snapped their streak of yeah. amazing uh, – regular season right. wins and just speaking of regular season wins have to mention this Wapak beat Shawnee uh, on Saturday as I mentioned that's 20 straight regular season wins for Wapak but more importantly 70 straight regular season wins for Wapak head coach Travis Moyer oh my goodness isn't that that's wild something. yeah that's 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 why he's going great back coach. to his days at yeah. Winford and then picking yeah. up right here at yeah. Wapakoneta and missed a beat yeah so Wapak's yeah. one of the 2-0 teams but I don't think they're going to be your most surprising 2-0 team no, my most surprising is Allen East. Yeah. You know, they were three and seven last year, and they've come out and they've played a couple of pretty good opponents and won them both and looked really strong. I had heard in preseason they were looking good, and they must be. All right, now let's turn our attention to week three. Okay. We've got some good games on the schedule. We do. What are you looking forward to? Well, I mentioned, you know, the, the must win that Van Buren's in against Macomb. Uh, you know, Coldwater Minster's the marquee matchup in the MAC just because they're both defending state champs and right now both 2-0. and um, you know, the WBL, we've got the four teams that everybody talked about maybe having a chance to win it. They're all playing each other this yeah. week. Kenton and Wapak, OG and Van Wert. So uh, next week we're going to sit here and we're going to look like geniuses because we're going to know what <laughs> direction that league's headed in a little bit. A little bit. And then LCC Ada, I, I like that one just because uh, Ada's good. LCC potentially is good. Let's see if they can maintain what they did against uh, Delphi St. John's last week. League openers in the MAC that intrigued me. Anna Fort Recovery should be an interesting mm -hmm. one. Yeah, it would be. Delta St. John's Versailles. And the big one is Coldwater Minster, as you mentioned. And then Grove Patrick Henry, a couple 2 0 teams in non conference. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that should be a good one. Lima Senior is going to Piqua. Yeah, that'll be their best 
test so far. They're Pick both 2-0. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So lots of games to look forward to. Again, we'll have you covered on the Sports Report, as we always do. But now let's get you to our rebroadcast schedule. Four games coming your way this week, and it all begins Friday at 11 p.m. on WOSN with that matchup between defending state champs, Minster versus Coldwater. And then Friday at 11 p.m., if you flip over to WTLW, you can watch Kenton versus Wapakoneta. Good Western Buckeye League matchup, two of the top teams in the league. Saturday at 7 begins a doubleheader, St. Henry versus Parkway, a MAC opener for both of those teams. And then 9 p.m. has Crestview versus Wayne Trace, a couple of teams both 1-1 one and one on the season who know each other well and have mm -hmm. gotten to know each other well over the that, last that's couple good, of years. That's some good games have been put together there, baby. Yeah, That'll so we're, we're rocking and rolling. Week 3 is already here. This football season is going to fly by. Mm -hmm. So I hope you'll join us for the ride. And again, Sports Report Friday, 10 p.m. And then we'll get started with those games kicking off Friday, 11 p.m. on WOSN and WTLW. For Mark Miller, I'm Matt Finkel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Mark's Madness.